Hello students. In this video I'm going to show you some correlation and regression. So I have some raw data right here. Um, I've got the oil price per barrel and then the corresponding gas price per gallon. So when the oil price was this, the gas price was this, and so on. Um, so these are kind of linked together. We want to make sure that they stay together if we do any sorting, um, that they, they get sorted together so that this 19.73 always stays with the corresponding gas price with it. Okay. Uh, the first thing we want to do if we ever are dealing with correlation and regression is we want to graph a scatter plot. Um, so I'll do that first and to do that we're just going to highlight all of our data. You can highlight both columns because you want to plot these as coordinate points. So um, the 19.73 comma 1.38 you're plotting as coordinate points. So you're going to insert a scatter plot. Okay, so that's this icon under insert, and it's just this first one. We don't want to connect the dots or anything, we just want to get that scatter plot on there. Okay, so this is um, starting over here with 15, and so you see it's starting at zero, and we really would like to kind of see a little bit more and see what this data is doing a little bit better. So one thing you can do um, is you can format your axis. So I just right clicked on my axis, click on my axis, right click on my axis, format axis, and you can actually start your axis. Um, we'll just start it at 15. So that way we can see the data a little bit. We don't have all this white space. So hit enter. That's just going to start now at 15. Um, that way we don't have all the white space. You can do the same on your vertical if you want to start it a little bit, um, maybe at one here to, um, to get rid of some more white space if you would like. Okay, so it just kind of depends on your preference. I think seeing those spread out without having to just make my chart really big is, is nice. So I think this is sufficient. Let's change the charts, titles, okay, because we always want to label our graph correctly. So this is um, looking at oil and gas prices, okay, and then we'll also label our um, two axes. The horizontal axis is your independent variable and it's always going to be here in column A. So your um, Excel will always graph your first column as your independent and then your second column as your dependent. And to figure out, you know, which one is which, how are you going to decide that, just think about what came first. Did price per barrel come first or did the gas price for come first? And in this case we always, you know, we buy the oil first and then the, the gas price is kind of dependent on what that oil price was. So that kind of helps me determine there where to put those in the columns. So this would be our oil price per, per barrel. So your oil price per barrel, okay, and then our vertical axis, our dependent variable, is our gas price per gallon. All right, so got that labeled nicely. So there's our scatter plot. That's that's done. If all you need to do is graph a scatter plot. And you can go ahead and see, you know, the, the shape of the line here and that it is kind of conforming to a linear regression here. Um, to check on that, to see, oh, is there a correlation here? We can do our correlation coefficient. So let's find that. And this is our R linear correlation coefficient. Um, so and to get that, it's C-O-R-R-E-L is the correlation coefficient that is built into Excel and it will compute it for you, parentheses, and then it has you selecting array one and then array two. These are your two data sets that are correlated, hopefully, together. So I'm just going to click and drag over my first set of data, A2 through A26, the cells in that set of data then a comma, and then my array two, which is my second variable. 
click and drag over that. Close your parentheses, hit enter, and this is your correlation coefficient. So it's pretty high. Um, remember that the closer to one it is or to negative one, the better relationship that you have. So this one of course is positive because there's a positive relationship as you looked at the graph. If you move left to right it is going up, so it's a positive relationship um, and a pretty high correlation coefficient getting close to one. Okay, not perfect because as you can see this is not lying on a straight line. Um, there are some outliers here where the the gas price is a little bit higher than you know correlating to the oil price and we know that happens. So you are going to have some outliers but you are um, you are a pretty good relationship here. Okay, to define that relationship we do so with a linear regression line. Uh, so let's insert that into our scatter plot and to do that I'm going to click on any data value here, any point, okay, any of your little points um, and then right click and select add trend line. So Excel calls our least squares line, our regression line, um, several names that it goes by, but line of best fit, they call it a trend line. Okay, so you can stick that in there. So there's your trend line. You have some options over here to format it that pop up. If you don't have this pop up, you can always right click and um, move to format trend line to get that to pop up. We do want it because one thing we want to do is we want to display our equation on the chart. We want to see what that equation is um, of our trend line. You can move that, select it and move it, get it where you want. Okay, another thing you can do with your trend line, we select it again. Another thing you can do is you can forecast forward and backwards. So um, we can, for instance, change this to, let's just go to three. So that will push our, um, our line three periods forward. So watch that happen. Okay, so three units, let's just go to two. So that way you can see if we were to continue and our, our oil price were to increase, you know, what would that prediction be? You could actually see it on the line a little bit better. You can also do it backwards. Let's go two periods backwards as well. And this is, periods are the, um, what your x-axis is. So it's just adding, you know, going from, um, going out to two units in this case and going back two units. Okay. So there's that trend line. You don't have to adjust it to where it's going forward and backwards, but I just think that it's nice to see that sometimes. Okay, let's change the look of our line as well. I, I kind of don't love how it's dotted, so you can come over here to um, these options on the format trend line, and I'm going to change the, um, the dash type to, let's do a solid line. Um, we can make it a little bit thicker if we want. Um, so a couple things that we can do with that. You can also put arrows on it, which I really like arrows on my graph. So let's put a begin arrow and end out. All these are just cosmetic things, okay? So not essential, but just making it look a little bit better. Okay, so there's our um, scatter plot our trend line, the equation of our trend line, our correlation coefficient. Another thing that you can add when you add a trend line is the R squared value. You can display the R squared value on the chart, so that's kind of useful as well. Okay, so um, now that we have the equation, let's look at some predictions that we can make in Excel. So I've got the, um, the equation here, and this is in an uh, y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so a, we call this a um, slope intercept form with the slope in front of the x and then the y intercept following. Um, in statistics, a lot of times we write this and our book writes this in kind of a, um, a, a different form. They put the constant first, we call it an um, ascending order of exponents. They put the constant first and then they put in this 0.06282x. So they would write it as, we just put it up here so you can see it, y equals 0 0.0603. So they get that y intercept in there first plus the slope 0 0.0682. Um, X. Okay, so um, our book likes it to look like this. OK, 
okay? So you may be entering it into our online homework system web assign like this, okay? So all that I've done is just switch those around. Addition is commutative, so you can just flip those around that addition sign. Just make sure that the numbers that are tied to the x stay tied to the x and your constant, your y-intercept, stays um, as a constant. It doesn't have an x with it, okay? So I took the whole value that was tied to the x and flipped it with the constant value. Okay, um, so let's let's do some predictions. Okay, so looking at some interpolation and e extrapolation. So I'm just going to label this predictions. We'll merge these cells together. And a prediction is when you put in the independent variable and say, okay, this is going to be my oil price. Now, what is predicted to be my gas price? According to this data that I have and what's happened in the past, what should happen in the future or even, you know, what should happen, you know, not in the future, just, just in the, um, any you can do interpolation which is within our data set or outside of our data set if our gas prices or our oil prices were to go higher what would that um, do to our gas prices we can do all that with a, a regression line okay i'm going to put in the slope and y-intercept like just separate them out so that i can um, put them into a formula so here's my slope and my intercept labels i'm just going to type them in so that i can use these in our formula. So our slope is 0 0.0682 and our intercept is 0 0.0603 and also for you just to see what those are. Okay. So I'm going to use this equation to make a prediction and my predictions are my y values so they are this y equals and my oil price is my x value. So I'm going to go ahead and get this equation in. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the, um, the intercept okay, and add our slope times our oil price. Okay. So this is just this equation, all right, in this kind of cell form. Um, and I'm going to put some dollar signs around the L's here to freeze our slope and our y-intercept because they're always going to be the same. They're not going to click and drag. But um, what that's going to allow me to do is click and drag this so that I can have, you know, as many predictions as I want. So let's say we have an oil price that is, we'll start with some interpolation, which is within our data values. Let's sort it to see where our data begins and ends before we label this as interpolation or extrapolation. So I'm going to take this and sort it, smallest to largest. I do want to expand the selection here because I want to keep each data set, each data value tied to its dependent value. So that 19.73 needs to stay with that 1.38. So I am going to expand the selection. All right. Um, so now we know <laughs> that the, the x values are sorted from least to greatest. So the 19.73 is the smallest. 25.82 is the greatest. Within that, um, those two boundaries is interpolation. So if I had exactly 21, for instance, as my oil price, my gas price predicted would be 1.4925. And so we want to um, change this to where it's two decimal places like our data is. So I'm going to format the cells by right clicking and format cells. Okay. And we want to format this as a number so that we can have two decimal places like our data. Okay. So now as we move down, um, we can keep that. Okay, so what happens here is if I have 21, exactly 1.49 is on the line, okay? Now, I don't have exactly 21 in my data, so I'm not able to compute a residual here, okay? Our, a residual is y minus y hat. It would be this um, whatever the 
21, if I had a 21 value here and a corresponding um, y value, I would take that and subtract. This is my y hat because we call this our y hat. Our function is our y hat. I'm not able to put a hat on the Excel, but pretend it's on there. Okay, so let's do a residual. Um, let's do 21.12. Okay, because I have that data point right here. Here is the actual value. There was an observed time where the oil price was twelve, $21.12 and the corresponding gas price was one forty-three. So let's see what the predicted value was. It's the same formula as above, so just drag it down. The predicted value is $1.50. Okay, but what actually happened, it was $1.43. Okay, so based on the line, it should be $1.50, um, and this is taking all the other points into consideration to build that line. This was just one absurd value, 143. Okay, if I wanted to compute that residual, I have it here. I'm going to take the y value, this is the y value, it's the absurd value, minus the predicted value, y hat value. So there's our residual. It's negative because this is higher than our observed value. Okay, our observed value is lower than this. We only have residuals when we are using a value that we have observed. So the 21, we didn't have observed value, so we don't have a residual. Let's do another one. Stick with interpolation, still within my data set. Let's look at a 25. Exactly. 1.77, so this is what's laying on the line. It should be about 1.77. Okay, I don't have an observed value. I do have a 24.94, so let's look at that and look at the residual. 24.94. Use the formula to compute, and then we can do the residual here. So um, y minus y hat, so our value over here minus our predicted value. Okay, so very close to our, our observed and our predicted value are very close. So that's some interpolation. It's interpolation because I am within the data set. Okay, let's try some extrapolation. Extrapolation is when I move outside of my data set. So the boundaries on my data set again are 19.73 and 25.82. These are the boundaries on your x values. So let's move less than our data set. So 19.73, let's look at 19, so not very far from our data set. And there's our predicted value for 19. You can see it's outside my data set right here. Okay, I can even go um, way beyond my data set, maybe with $10, okay, and a gas price of 0.74, don't we wish, okay. Um, and we have to talk about, you know, is this reliable if we're this far away from our data set, this much of an extrapolation, um, you know, it's, it's way down over here, we don't even have it on the graph right now, um, you know, what would it, what would it, would it be reliable? Because you don't want to extrapolate too far. You can if you want to. You want to get a rough estimate, but the farther you are away from your data, the kind of the rougher your estimates are. Let's try 27. So this is above my data. 1.9. Now you can see I'm not even having to click and drag. Excel's like, oh, I know what you're doing. Okay, so that's some extrapolation. Let's label it as so. Right. So we have some interpolation. We can't do any residuals, of course, with extrapolation because those are not going to be observed. Um, we, we don't have to have a residual in order for it to be interpolation. It doesn't have to be an observed value. It just has to be within our data set. Okay. So a pretty good example, a pretty good correlation. I think these would these predictions would hold up nicely. We've got small residuals. We do have residuals to look at. Um, we don't have many points that are far off the line. These are as far as they, they get off the line, and we can look at those residuals if we wanted to. Um, so there's some correlation and regression for you.